Man, it's crazy how fast the weather changes here in Florida. Yesterday it was like 82 degrees, sunny, like almost like borderline hot, humid, and today it's like 50 degrees and overcast, <laughs> which is kind of like a big change. I don't know. Like that temperature change isn't, but it's like two very different types of days. It's like springish and then winter for us. Well, I was enjoying my day. Ha! <laughs> Screw you, brother. What are you up to there, Ben? Brother. I've been tearing it apart for like three days. Well, I've worked on it like an hour a day. <laughs> true, true. I can't hate. Okay, we'll see. So my gimbal battery's dead. So gave me an opportunity to try out this lens. I got this lens and I really like it, uh, but the problem is it's too heavy for my gimbal. So the footage is a little shakier than normal. Let me know. I mean, you'll, you'll, it will be shakier than normal, but don't judge me. Trying something new. So plan for today, more progress on this thing. So first thing I wanna do is figure out if we are boned or not with our dry sump pump and fittings. See how the fittings hang down below the pan? The pan is like right up against the subframe slash steering rack. I wanna test fit the whole engine on the subframe and see kind of where we're at with that. See if we're gonna have to like loop out and around with the fittings, if kind of figure something else out, if like the mounting position of the pump's not gonna work for anything to like head mount it or, or what, I, I don't really know. Um, but I wanna figure that out, that's pretty important. We go and do that first. Never tighten all your bolts until all your bolts, or any of your bolts, until all your bolts are in. Usually you gotta wiggle stuff around. All right, so now we need to move some engines around, <laughs> fins, to make some room and get that engine on the hoist. Um, get the subframe on this. So we got this little roller deal here, which will help get it kind of higher so it'll be easier to see where the lines have possible clearance issues instead of trying to like lay on the ground and do it. Uh, so yeah, engine moving mission commence. Check out that sick garage built hoodie though. Woo! 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 Link in the description, boys. That's right, brothers. Boys. There's not enough names. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you can We call need a new one that, that nobody uses, but there's just, there's only so many things you can call people like that aren't derogatory. <laughs> if we think of a new one, we'll start calling. Engine moving, commence. Well, major concern alleviated. When I was looking at it and just eyeballing it, it looked like these two ports were gonna end up right on top of the steering rack and that these fittings weren't gonna be short enough to clear it, but they end up in front of it, which is good. We'll probably run this one kind of like out this way and then loop it back over to that back one and then run this one 
short to the front there and it'll be like turned a little bit more. Um, and the only one that's kind of going to be difficult is this. This is our main feed from the tank, dash 12. So it's a very large, <laughs> very large fitting. Um, and the only thing, the tightest radius I got was a 90. So we need at least a 120. I don't know if they make a 180. A 180 would be ideal because we're going to basically shoot it up like this. And that'll put us basically right there. And then we can go up kind of over the fender arch and then down through the cockpit of the car back to the trunk. Uh, but I, again, I'm, st I'm so relieved that these fit and this fits, that they all fit. They're all just in front of the steering rack. Like, could not get any closer. And if you guys didn't see the original dry sump video, the pan fitment is freaking mint. And look at all this ground clearance. The engine's tilted back now, but so much room. Never have to worry about crushing the pan on, on the ground. Like we could be dragging subframe and still be all right. Definitely something I wanted to figure out first and I'm freaking ugh, made my freaking day that, that 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 worked out. I thought about it yesterday when I was looking at it and I was like, oh man, I really, really hope that this fits because <laughs> I'm so pumped on this dry sump system. Okay, so anyway, uh, next steps, what we could do, install our front cover, our ATI damper, get the belt on for the dry sump pump, etc. cetera. Um, or finish up our handbrake line stuff for the car. I have all the handbrake lines, I have all the fittings I need, P-clamps, etc. cetera. Um, so we might do that. We might probably do that first and then work on this later. I don't wanna go too crazy with getting this thing assembled and then have more stuff that I could smash it into while it's on the engine hoist, moving it around. I don't know. I, I'm, <laughs> normally I don't have engines this nice, so it's like weird. It's a weird feeling to me. I'm like, I don't wanna mess you up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, did I bump into you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's okay. It's okay, engine, it's okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna eat some lunch, figure out what I'm gonna do, and I'll see you guys after I eat some lunch. This is what Ben eats for lunch. Dude, it's grilled cheese sticks. Grilled cheese sticks and barbecue sauce. They're pretty good. Sands is looking all majestic. Check this out, someone sent me wipers because I always forget to order wipers for the Z. And like last event, I had to steal the wipers off my truck just so I could see because it was raining the whole time and I literally couldn't see anything. So someone sent me wipers and look what they put as my name. Taylor forgets to buy wipers, Ray. <laughs> well, thank you, kind stranger. We now have wipers for the Z. If you guys didn't see the video, we got our secondary calipers on. My fittings came in to go into the calipers because they use like a special eighth MPT fitting to dash three. Um, so we just need to run our lines, our T and all that stuff. So that'll be fun. Be a satisfying project to get that knocked out. But I need to order brake pads. Comment below and tell me to order brake pads. So by the time this video goes up, I will be at my computer and I'll be able to order them. Keep forgetting. And this is like one of those things where I'm gonna be ready to go drift the car and be like, I don't even have freaking brake pads for my e-brake. <laughs> it's just my life, just my life. Okay, let's get all this stuff moved around and then uh, get the car down so we can start working on it. So here is our feed from the handbrake itself. So at 90s off the handbrake, goes through the carpet, comes back to here. We have a T, which I need to grab. And then this is our driver's side line, passenger side line. So the T is gonna be offset to the driver's side. So the passenger side line is longer. We have a little hole, like factory hole, to send each of them through. So first thing we're gonna do, feed it through the hole, hook it up to the uh, brake caliper itself, and then kind of figure out how far they reach. Got the lines ran down. We need to route them in a logical manner so they don't get caught up on anything. This thing is going to be behind the clover. Find them back there. Hopefully that leaves us enough slack. All right, let's see if they're still long enough. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> This line's long enough. All right, well, they both reach um, pretty good. This one will be able to P-clamp down just to keep it nice and tight. 
I don't like this one sitting on this lip here, so I am gonna go ahead and grind that lip down just to flatten it out some. And then we will make, uh, you know, rib nut this so we can bolt the T in. And we can start P clamping, P clamping and rib nutting. Always satisfying. It's like the adult version of tying stuff. <laughs> oh man. E brake wine mounting kit. All right, all the wine routing is done. It looks really nice, super, I mean, pretty clean. We're gonna have a plate here for where the dry sump tank mounts, so you really won't even see it, but all in all, not bad at all. And the inside looks like you barely even can tell that there's like a reservoir and a line and stuff, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm glad that's done. Uh, I've gotta figure out some dry sump stuff. I ordered non-PTFE hose and fittings for the feed and return, the Dash 12 stuff but I really should have ordered PTFE and I'm trying to figure out exactly which fittings I'm gonna need, like the 150 or the 180 and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go work on that stuff tonight because I'm just trying to stay like on top of it. I don't wanna end up ready to go and you know waiting on one fitting because this one didn't work. So trying to get all that figured out. So that's what I'm gonna go do now and I'll pick this back up in the morning. We have something very, very fun that we're gonna go do. So we are headed to look at some go-karts we might wanna buy. So it's very exciting. It's something that I've been looking forward to pretty much all week. We've been talking about it for a while. We've gone back and forth on it and we're finally doing it. We're gonna go try them out. So very exciting thing number one. Thing number two, I finally bought something that I wanted for a very long time and it came in today. I'm really excited to play with it, but I didn't have time before we left. So we're gonna do that when we get back, assuming there's still daylight. So two very exciting things, very exciting day. Very happy Taylor today. <laughs> All right, so these are the rental carts that we normally run for lead night. These are the 206 carts. So it's a much lighter cart. It makes less power, but it's way lighter, better tires, etc. God, this thing already feels crazy. Already almost crashed it. They accelerate way faster. Wow. This is way more intense. Way more intense than I thought it would be. on the threshold. Oh my God. Ugh. This is crazy. Definitely go faster through there. Oh my god, I haven't talked much because this is intense. It's so much faster than the rental car. Oh my god. Holy shit, it's so much faster than the other carts than I thought it would be. Like, really surprised how fast it is. It's tiring. <laughs> that should have wear you out. Yep. What'd you think, Ben? Yeah, that was pretty fun. Dude. Definitely way more
almost died. Well, 206 carts were definitely a success. Uh, I went in with low expectations because I didn't want to go and think these are going to be awesome and then them be terrible, not terrible, but be like the same as a rental cart. And they are way more fun than the rental cart, way more intense. Um, I mean, like I actually felt like I, I couldn't push it hard enough. Whereas the rental carts, you're pretty much pushing it to its limits and trying to find the balance between going too far and going too little, you know, to be faster and, and get every 10th out of it. Whereas that, like I wasn't even to the level of pushing it past its limits, which is really cool. Um, they feel really fun, they handle amazingly well. Super affordable racing series, that's what's cool about them. The motors are like 600 bucks. They are sealed from the factory, so they're all the same. Um, tires last you a whole season, are like 200 bucks. Like it is super affordable to race. Costs probably sub $100 per race, um, like per race day, which is really, really cheap. So definitely looking to get into that. Might run them for like an actual race, see how the competition is, see how the racing is. Um, and then if it's really awesome, you know, potentially buy one, that would be, that would be awesome. It'd be a lot cheaper than getting into Spec Miata or something, which is what we had thought about doing before. Um, and we're still gonna finish the chump car so we can do some real car racing, but it's just, I don't know that I can afford to do re real car racing even at a super budget level and drifting, whereas karting's gonna be much, much cheaper. But anyway, that's that for the 206 carts. Again, very excited. Exciting thing number two of the day, I finally bought a drone. I got the Mavic Air. Um, did some research. I've wanted to buy a drone for a long time. I couldn't justify how or when I would use it. Finally came up with some excuses to buy one, so we're gonna try it out. Man, that was super cool. I'm still kind of nervous to fly it like too far out of my line of sight, uh, but wow, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Uh, fortunately, I've flown like smaller, like for fun drones before. So I have like, I know like the controls and I know, you know, how to kind of do certain things. So it was a little bit easy to kind of figure that out at least. But I mean, like thinking of flying like so far out of sight and having to rely on the camera, which gets delayed if you're going fast, like, you know, it's tough. It gives me like a whole new appreciation for like super awesome drone shots, which I'm excited to hopefully bring you guys um, in future videos because drone shots are sick. <laughs> I just figure, especially like for drift events and stuff, being able to show you guys kind of like the scale of the event, show you guys the track and what it looks like from the top will give you a better idea. Like it'll, it'll help you better visualize like where we're going and what we're doing when we're drifting and like how many people are there and, and stuff like that. I, just, I don't know. Plus I just, drones are cool and it's cool to freaking fly something a thousand feet in the air and look down at your house, you know? <laughs> okay, got some errands to run to get everything ready for tomorrow. Uh, we should have the last piece of the LS puzzle tomorrow, so we should be able to get it completely ready to go in the car tomorrow, which is very exciting. Uh, so I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.